I'd like to move on now to Associate Professor Nicola Newton, who um, is an Associate Professor and Director of Prevention at the Matilda Centre for Research in Mental Health and Substance Use at the University of Sydney. She is leading a large program of research in the prevention of substance use and mental disorders, uh, spanning intervention, development, evaluation and translation. Uh, Nicola has pioneered research in this area by developing and commercialising the first suite of effective e-health prevention programs for substance misuse, known as Climate Schools. So I'd like to welcome uh, Nicola to the stage. Uh, she's going to speak to us about scaling an effective school-based e-health prevention program during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much, Leanne. I will just share my slides. Hopefully you can see them all. If not, feel free to stop me. So today I'll be- Not quite yet. Oh. Actually, we can't see your slides. Okay, let's start again. There we go. And you just need to put it in presenter mode. We can still see all your... All oh, the notes. Oh, yeah. sorry. Up the top um, left, there's swap displays. If you hit that, it'll sort it. It'll do it? How's that? That's it. Perfect. Great. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> You'd think, you know, 18 months in, I'd know how to use Zoom. Um, so today I'll be talking about a bit of a different tack to the other um, talks we've just had, but I'm going to be taking more of a public health approach um, to translation and talking about scaling an effective school-based e-health prevention program during the COVID pandemic. So before I start, I'd just like to acknowledge the many contributors to the Climate Schools programs over the years, um, mostly my wingman in this, Marie Thiessen, who I've been working with on 15 years uh, with these pro on these projects, as well as our funders. So what will we be covering today? I'll start by giving you a short overview of what Climate Schools is and its effectiveness. Then I'll discuss the impacts the programs have had, especially during the COVID pandemic, and finally talk about future directions. So what is Climate Schools? Climate Schools are universal evidence-based prevention programs for secondary school students, empowering them to make positive choices and improve their own health and well-being. Over the years, we've developed five modules or five modules that are now available that are tried and tested. And each of these utilizes interactive cartoon storyboards to engage and educate the students. So the five modules are aligned with state and national health education curriculums. Um, each of these being co-designed with young people as well as health and education experts. And they range from an alcohol module designed for students in year eight, to an alcohol and cannabis module, a mental health module, a cannabis and psychostimulant module, and a module on ecstasy and emerging drugs for older adolescents. They can either be implemented um, individually or sequentially across the school years. So each of the modules is designed to be easily implemented across one school term. It's made up of four to six lessons and it's based on the social influence approach to prevention. The main component is this interactive cartoon storyline and there's about 120 slides per lesson. And what they, that does is um, impart all the information that we're trying to get across to the kids, but um, in a much more interactive and engaging way than say an old workbook or a, um, or a black and white printout does. So we embed characters within, these, um, within the modules that are the same age as the students. So allowing us to deliver peer led messages, which we know are more effective at driving behavior change than messages coming from an authority figure. So there's also interactive quizzes which are embedded in the cartoons to reinforce the information as well as lesson summaries and activities which the teacher can choose to deliver if they have time. So to date we've conducted eight randomised control trials of the Climate Schools programs. Um, six are complete and two are currently underway 
the trials have included 240 schools across Australia and over 21,000 students. And there's been 42 publications reporting the effectiveness of these programs. Overall, um, they've produced small to modest effects, but importantly, these are, um, out of these are universal interventions. So on a population level, these are quite impactful. And we've also been able to have a um, pilot study in the UK. So to summarize the results, what we've found is that compared to health education as usual, students who have received the programs have shown improved knowledge about mental health and alcohol and other drugs, reduced alcohol consumption and binge drinking, reduced cannabis and ecstasy use, slowed progression of anxiety symptoms and reduced psychological distress, reduced harms from substance use, reduced intentions to use substances in the future and improved attitudes towards alcohol. And these have been shown um, multiple times for up to three years following the intervention. But most recently, we've just got a couple of papers um, accepted and one coming out this week that's showing that we can have um, effects lasting up to seven years post-intervention. So this is when students are transitioning out of high school um, into those early adult years. So um, that's a really exciting finding. As well as the, the, the statistical results that we like, um, we also have found that the students and teachers really rate the, the program as enjoyable and an interesting way to learn. They feel the program is um, easy to understand and remember, and teachers would rate it higher than other programs. So what about the impact of climate? Well, in addition to our own publications, the trials have been cited in a number of influential reviews and meta-analyses examining the, the effectiveness of drug and alcohol prevention, including Cochrane reviews. And in one recent review, it was found to be only one of three alcohol education programs rated as having good long-term effect. The programs have also been endorsed in national and state-based resource directories and reviews such as the Department of Education Student Wellbeing Hub, the Alcohol and, Other Drug, Alcohol and Drug Foundation, and BU's Beyond Blue portal. We've also been able to translate this research into policy, informing both national and international prevention policies and practices. For example, in 2013, we were registered with the National Register for Evidence-Based Prevention Programs in the US. Um, and we've also been excited in a number of UNODC reports and um, World Health Organization reports. So this is the, the really interesting part, I think. So uh, since developing these programs, we have been, um, we commercialized them and we've been managing the translation of them um, with schools paying a small subscription fee. So over the last 2015, so over the last five years, we were asking schools to pay a small fee up to $900 a school, but ranging from 250 to 900, depending on um, the size of the school. And this would go towards funds to maintain the programs. But in recognition of the challenges schools were having um, with a sudden learning, a shift to learning from home and adjusting to this social isolation that COVID brought with it, we were able to offer the programs free of charge thanks to some funding we received from the Paul Ramsey Foundation. Um, this made a huge difference to the uptake of the programs. So we can see that we currently have 521 full registrations of the programs and um, we, only 64 of these were the paid registrations. So by having that free, um, the, the free registration, we've been able to, to increase the access by another 457 schools, now reaching 500 schools with full access and another 500 who have set up preview accounts. Keeping in mind that there's only 3000 high schools um, in Australia, we feel like we're making really good gains. So finally moving on to future directions. So, off the back of COVID, there's never been a more important time for people to access high quality evidence-based mental health and substance use programs. And while we love the, the current climate schools programs, we feel like it's time for a refresh. So we're really excited to announce that early next year, climate schools will be relaunching as our futures. 
And the aim of this is to upscale the program to maximise accessibility and students' social wellbeing in this increasingly digital world. So this is our new branding, which we love and was developed with um, students and teachers to ensure it was appropriate for the um, context, um, context. And as part of this update, we updated all the content, um, including reviewing all the literature, um, updating all the National Health and Medical Research Council alcohol guidelines, all the new statistics because substance use and mental health changes um, dramatically with different cohorts. So updating all of this to reflect the youth of today. We also updated cartoon imagery. So you can see some of those old pictures on the left. Um, once upon a time, we thought they were kind of cool and that we've updated them to now be more relevant to youth of today, including handheld phones to smartphones, for example. We've also had to update uh, a lot of the wording. So back uh, when we first developed the ecstasy module, people would refer to ecstasy as pills, but they're, they're now much more read readily referred to as caps. So we've had to change a lot of the language throughout to ensure we're um, consistent. Backstories is another thing that we've added in. So based on feedback from our young people, they loved the um, they loved the stories, but they want to know more. So you know, we've built in this backstory component where the students can learn more prior to embarking on the, the story of these people that they're going to follow over the term. And a really exciting thing is that we've put um, voiceovers in. So I'm not sure if this will work, but I'll just try one. So we really love this more um, interactive um, it, delivery that we can now use as well. As well as that, there's interactive activities keeping up with today's youth. So when they finish um, a module, they can kind of just sit around and play within the class. And there's also multilingual translation into 22 languages that we've been able to achieve. So this will all be um, relaunched uh, or launched in January next year, allowing schools to, um, to translate as they please. Final update was adding a teacher discussion board and marking centre because teachers, um, they wanted to have a forum where they can go and they can chat between themselves and have a, an evaluation component um, which we've added in for them rather than just evaluating through our own trials. So we believe that all these updates are going to create great opportunities for young people all across Australia and the world, whether studying in school or at home, and we can achieve high quality evidence-based health and wellbeing courses. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Nicola. What a what an amazing um, range of work. I mean, and it's just lovely to say it's continued to evolve over time, and you've continued to develop your resources. So it's starting to to look, you know, quite a mature approach to a, to a very complicated um, issue. I do have one question for you from Peter Erling. Um, he says, hi, great to know, have you considered teaching concepts by parallel techniques such as somatic learning and group play, interactive workshop, making it fun and memorable, so helping embed concepts and learning mutually post COVID isolation, obviously, thanks. Thanks for that question. Um, yeah, it's a great question. And whilst we like to have all the core components and core content, um, in, embedded within those cartoon storylines that the students work through themselves. There's also a range of activities that the teacher can choose and they range from like individual kind of um, worksheets to group plays to whole class discussions. So there is that opportunity um, depending on the resources the teacher and time the teacher has available. But yeah, I agree it would be great for, to get kids to interact in any way possible once we get through this. I was wondering, um, just looking at all the, the resources that you're using, what, what do you think the actual active ingredient is? What, what are children taking away when they, they, they go through these programs? Well, in line with the literature and what we're finding, it's a really, really simple 
sound a simple message. If it, if it was that simple, we wouldn't be having to do it. But by um, teaching kids, we call it normative education. So by teaching kids that not everyone is using alcohol and other drugs, or not everyone is going to get drunk on the weekends, by um, correcting those misperceptions they have, that is the most powerful message and the, power, the most powerful um, thing to evoke change in kids. So it's called yet yeah, normative education, which is a part of the social influence approach. And I had one last question. I noticed you've, you've got all, all the things that I can think of having, um, you know, contact with teenage kids um, that they come across um, vaping. I can't, I couldn't Great see question. That. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we often get that, that question, Leanne, and we are starting to, we've developed a few resources, not um, full comprehensive programs like this, but next year we are embarking on that. So we're currently recruiting at the moment. If anyone wants to come work at Matilda Centre, we're looking for a level eight postdoc to come and help us develop um, a vaping program similar, using a similar framework to this. Great. Um, there's one more question that I think we have time for from Katie Sam. For Nicola, with the fantastic results and impact of the program, could there be opportunities to expand the distribution to community based youth services or family services to help target at risk adolescents who might not be as well engaged with education? Yeah, absolutely. I would um, I would love to do that. I think that there's definitely um, value that, that we can get out of this into we can um, adapt it for youth centres and have it we could have a big impact out of the school environment as well happy to yeah get in touch happy to talk about new ideas perfect well thank you so much